evening. I hope everyone is doing well. Just checking in with the chat box, making sure that people are getting in okay. I don't know about where you are, but where I am today is going to be quite warm. It's already hot. <clears throat> and I consider this, you know, still early morning. <laughs> so pop on in, join us. I'll wait till a few people find their way in before we get started. Um, good morning. I got, I hope I'm saying your name right, Dania. And Denise, good morning, good morning. Irene and Glad and Wendy. All right. Today, um, as if you've been watching the quilt show uh, commercials that come up, I, I don't know if they're commercials or not, but um, the notices that we're going to be doing the New York Beauty Block today, which is also a little bit of the paper piecing. And so we're going to go through those things today uh, for some of you who uh, may have some curiosity about uh, putting together and using paper piecing with um, those sharp points that come with a New York Beauty. So we're going to be working on that today and looking forward to that. And all right, I'm seeing quite a few, so we'll go ahead. I'm going to start with the, the things that are helpful to have and what I consider you need to have these to to do paper piecing and especially with uh you know blocks like this and stuff so let me take you down to the table this is the block we're going to be working on and i decided to you know a basic new york beauty block for today and because to be truly honest once you've mastered you know a, a basic you know getting the points in um, getting started on this it's all it's pretty much the same and uh, i am using alex's book um, her paper piecing book and they have it in the store and if you are a person who wants to learn more about paper piecing or you know get brushed up on the you know different points and different kinds of paper piecing I highly recommend this book it has absolutely great illustrations and I'm not just saying it because I'm teaching on the quilt show with Alex um, or for Alex rather and but because it is I was using these books long before I ever knew her because they're the illustrations are are wonderful and also the instructions are straightforward and simple so I mean it literally shows you step by step how to do that and the placing of that it's clear precise and it it goes right to uh, the heart of what it takes to make a New York beauty block and because it was um, easy to do I chose to uh, use the pattern from there and I also have another one from another book that I have and a pattern that I've been working on for a while. The second thing is you need to have good paper and as long as I've been doing this Carol Doak's paper, the foundation paper, is really for me um, the best out there. One because it goes through my printer uh, I've had different models. I've had Epson. Right now I have an HP and it smoothly goes through and I don't lose pages. It doesn't get stuck. It doesn't uh, jam up my uh, printer. All of those kinds of things are important to me. And I know that I have heard in classes. I have also read it on the internet, you know, um, and different places where you can buy 
the children's book that, um, you know, coloring pages that look like this um, and put it through. And yes, you can, uh, but it jams. It goes through four or five pages at a time. And I, to me, that's frustration that I don't need. And it takes me longer to get it done. So I, I do recommend Carol Doak's foundation paper. Then uh, the other paper that I have started to fall in love with is Quilter Select Print and Piece. And the reason that I really like this is because if you want to, you do not have to remove the paper. And if you read the section here on how to use it and its qualities one of the things is when you wash it the fibers break down and it's almost like having nothing there and i can attest to that because i've used it before left it in and washed the quilt and i you know it doesn't give it more heaviness or anything like that here I have printed part of our pattern out on this paper and this is what uh, we're going to look at and you know and and work with a little bit today as well as the Carol Doak paper. So if you want something and it's a little bit heavier uh, but it's fat it's actual um, cotton fabrics and so it, it has a very different feel to it. Um, I like it. It is not heavy. It is not thick and so that is another product that I am really starting to get excited about and look forward to using. Here is the tool that I don't believe you can live without. It's one of those that for me, it's an absolute necessity. It's called an add a quarter. They come in different colors. They come in different lengths. I tend to like this particular length and I like this color uh, for the tool. I've had it, you know, I've had it forever and I um, have bought other colors that it comes in, but I, I tend to go back to this size and this one. Partially because I can move it along as I'm, you know, cutting or uh, whatever I need to do and what is different about this ruler I don't know that if you can see it clearly if I can hold it up but on this end it has a quarter inch and has a little lip on it and as we you know work today you're gonna see how I use that if you have not done that before something else that has you know kind of come on the market recently at least recently that I've seen it is people are using water pens and uh, someone has made one specifically for paper piecing where when you're getting ready to remove the paper from your project, you can um, run that water pen down your um, stitching line and the paper comes off really, really easily. Um, the Carol Dokes paper comes off easily anyway. And if I need to do anything, what I've been doing in the past, um, forever and ever is I'll take the back of my seam ripper and I'll just run down that that line and pretty much the paper is already torn and stick my I need to do it on the table um, is pretty much and it doesn't mess with my uh, as you can see, that just came right open. It doesn't mess with my stitches or anything like that. It doesn't tear them out. Um, so whatever way, when we get to that point, you want to do that, that's great. So I, and this card, it doesn't have to be out of the um, Carol Doak paper, but I use it because it's there and it's always handy along with my paper but even the junk mail that you get at the store or excuse me at the store not the store the junk mail that you get in your mailbox um, will be this consistency of a you know of a card or um, postcard that kind of thing uh, it's next to my add a quarter 
it's my favorite tool. And so junk mail, I use this out of that and I will show you how I use that. We're gonna go through this step by step and I will talk about things that you know help and assist me as I work through the paper piecing at, with the New York Beauty Star. So with that in mind, we will, I'm gonna look at the comments and see if there's anything what fabric line is the print that's on your table right now? This right here, it's Tula Pink. I don't remember the name of it. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to. Um, all right. Okay, I, you know, uh, papers and people, um, Linda, it does, and I will talk a little bit about my stitch length in just a moment, and, but first let's take a look at the pattern that I have, and I want to get a ruler, because the question always comes up, you know, how do I cut it? Do I, you know, the, the old method of, of putting your um, paper up to the light so you can see it, the, the whole flipping thing uh, was, was difficult. I, I mean, I will admit that it was difficult. So what I do now, and how do you know what to cut this? There are you know, some teach to cut the shape that you're using only bigger, that type of thing. I use rectangles or I use a long strip of fabric. I've gotten to where long strips of fabric are helpful, you know, and, and a little bit quicker for me because I've been doing it a long time. But to get started with, I'm gonna go with both a long strip so you can see that and also um, rectangles. So what you need to do is look these this is the background and even though this one is smaller and it's a background piece i'm going to cut it the same size as this just for um, speed and accuracy so at the at the furthest point you're going to measure how big it is and this one is two and three eighths um, so i'm going to call it two and a half and i'm going to cut my strip at um you know uh Three, you know, a little over three, three and a quarter, three and a half, is what I'm what I'm going to cut it um, because I want a little bit and there's some waste. But now that we know what we can do with our waste, and I've got a few other tricks up my sleeve as I was looking for, um, you know, doing this pattern a little bit because um, you get these odd triangle shapes uh, for that. So now I'm going to measure down the longest side. So this one is about three and a half, so I'm gonna cut it about four and a half. So I've got three and a half by four and a half, or thereabouts, and you can cut that whatever size. I add an inch, it just gives me room to play and to make mistakes. And so, Jancy, you asked, can I watch this video later? Yes, you can. Uh, so you can watch it on YouTube, you can watch it here, or go to thequiltshow.com and you can watch it there. So. Now that I know what my, you know, background needs to be, I'm going to do the same thing here. So here I have one and a fourth, so I'm going to add an inch to that. So I'm going to cut it two and a fourth, and again, this is the same length, so three and a half. So I'm going to cut it about four and a half. All right, and that will give me my background, and I left my background as a strip, and I've cut. Uh, you know some of it already so that's how I determine the size that I'm going to cut my strips in uh -oh. and get me on that you know the right path there with that all right so let me get rid of this pen out of my way and I started my um, piece already because 
I wanted to be able to show you uh, how to piece the other two pieces in with this. So as you can see, I, I chose a, a solid gray background. I'm working on another quilt that this will be a part of and, and thought I could uh, do two things at once. Teach this as well as get another block done for what I'm doing. So, um, as and this looks rather awkward and stuff, but we haven't trimmed it. And speaking of trimming, let me go back to the pattern for just a minute. Most patterns have a broken or quarter inch line around them, but you will come across paper piecing patterns that stop right here. You will need to add that extra quarter inch if it's not already on your pattern. So you do have to pay attention to that when you're, when you're working with it. Uh, I think all of them, but the pineapple in Alex's book, uh, have the dotted lines, but you will find patterns quite often of paper piecing that do not have the um, seam allowance included. So I started this block and I'm going to start another block so you can see the starting point of this. I have sewn, I have trimmed, and you're going to see, you know, my steps. So my my trim has been completed and now I need a background piece. Once I have trimmed it, um, I, I can now lay right sides together my, you know, next piece on and I don't have to worry about getting it correct. Um, because when I sew this and flip it over, it's going to cover. So that's basically what I am doing here. And then I'm going to take it to my machine. And here's where I want to talk a little bit about the stitching length. And everything that I have been told, every book I've read, says to shorten your stitch length. And it will help with the tearing off of the paper, etc. I don't have a problem tearing off this paper, so I, I just really don't uh, consider that. Because when I shorten my stitch length and I make a mistake, which I seem to invariably do, I it's very difficult to get those stitches out. So me, personally, I do not shorten my stitch length. I leave it at my regular stitch length and so, and that is truly a, um, that's truly a personal thing. And so the stitch length is shortened so that the paper comes off easily. If you're using, um, you know, the um, Quilter Select paper, uh, and you're going to leave it in, then you don't have to shorten your stitch. And if you use, you know, this paper that comes off easily or the water pen, I don't think you need to, to worry too much about that. So um, once you have it on the other side, you flip it over and we are going to follow, you know, the line um, and stitch directly on the next line. between um, the last piece that you put on and the next piece that you're that you're going to put on so now I've sewn and I'm going to press And that is now completely covering my, let me get back to, now this is, I pressed and this is completely covering 
what it needs you know my next piece that it needs to cover so to get back to where I don't have to hold this up and look at it this is where my paper comes comes in I go to the next line that I'm going to be sewing on it's my background piece is already there so I'm going to do my next point I put my paper right along that black line and I make sure that I can see the black line so that when the paper folds over, I'm not losing, you know, part of, and I, I fold that down, you know, tear that little piece of paper back a little bit if I need to. Here's where the add a quarter ruler comes in and I trim it. And now I'm back to that angle again. So I've trimmed. That's where I was before. I'm going to put my last piece here. The other thing I want to mention is that you need to make sure that your pieces go beyond the quarter inch seam line on your paper. All right. So I have put that on there. Let's go to the machine. I'm going to turn it right side up and I am going to sew between that background piece and something is caught. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me see if I can go ahead and sew it and figure out what's what caught there I think my thread is um, incorrectly under my machine so see you know it happens and let's see if I can all right so again I have the next piece sewn I am going to press that back and I've made sure that it covers, you know, my seam lines, all of that good stuff. Um, flip it back, get my very expensive, very handy little tool here. I'm going, you know, that already starting to tear the paper just so I can get it back um, flip it over use my quarter inch add a quarter and the last thing that I need to do to complete this and I think I'll just um, use this last piece of gray and it's gonna I think it's gonna work just fine so I'll flip that over go back to the machine All right, and once again, I um, will press and I have all of my spikes and my side pieces on. And the next thing that we'll do is talk about um, trimming this up and so we're going to trim it on the 
quarter inch seam line all the way around. Um, and I'm going to live dangerously and go at this carefully and slowly Notice I'm not talking while I do that because I, you know, I can't do that. Talk and concentrate <laughs> at the same time. I'm one of those. All right. And I certainly could use my, my ruler right here, um, which would make it, you know, th those sides. But I'm living dangerously today. So you can go ahead and trim these. And that was where several layers were going over, so. Um, all right. So now I have it trimmed. And what I what excites me so much about you know the whole paper piecing thing is that I have my quarter inch seams up there and it's it's really kind of wonderful and I want before I move on I want to go to the chat box and see watch out fingers yeah it, I, it probably looked worse on um, Where can I get the little iron? Anything that I showed you today, uh, go right now. Um, Kristen, I know, puts up links to the things that at least I talk about that they have in the store. But you can get it at the Quilt um, Show store. So I would go there right now. And um, do I find ink transfer when you press with the dry iron? Nope, I do not. Uh, yes, the, today is Canada Day. So for all of our friends in Canada, happy Canada Day. All right. Um, I'm not getting any sound. Um, I'm not sure what to tell you to do. I know that happens from time to time with people, and I apologize. You may have to go back and watch it on uh, another source. I. Uh, Okay, I think that was the only thing I, uh, why do you not sew the first and last line? Uh, I don't, I don't really need to, um, to sew that last, those last two lines because that's going to be connected to the next block. And uh, so I, I suppose you could um, sew them down, but you're going to remove the paper anyway. So um, there's not really a need to do that. <laughs> All right, the next part, I already cut them out. I made templates um, from the pattern of B and C. I used um, glue stick and I glued them to the back uh, and cut them out. This is going to go here and this one will uh, fit in here. <sighs> couple of things from time to time I have left the paper on I do not for myself personally I don't have as much success with that so uh, I'm gonna get rid of at least um, this paper um, and my glue is stickier than I thought it's just I, I just used a uh, glue stick and there are those who remove, you know, the paper from here. And the truth of it is, is yes, you can. Um, there are times when I've removed all of the paper. And so I would say do what works best for you. I'm going to try to keep the paper on today. Um, 
we'll see how it goes. All right. And I'm going to find the center point of this strip. And I want to know what the center is here, which would be halfway in the middle of that. And I'm going to line those two up. And, you know, sometimes I use pins. I use a ton. Sometimes I use three, five. Um, it's It always depends kind of on my mood of the day. Um, Ricky Timms has taught how to do this with no pins at all. And you can go on the quilt show and find and uh, find his video on that. So now I'm, I'm going to go to the edges and pin here. And this is a little bit, um, a little bit stiffer, a little bit trickier with uh, leaving the paper on. Um, I don't know if, I think I saw Alex um, was on this morning and uh, she might add whether or not she would leave the paper in or remove it at this point. And so now I can manipulate and move this fabric as I sew it, um, as it goes in through all of this um, paper. So let's go to the machine and see how I do today with leaving the paper in, as opposed to removing that quarter inch. I know, um, and Jeannie, I would agree, and thank you for reminding me. Um, you can use, either glue stick, the acorn glue, um, and dot this with the glue all the way around and then sew it with the, you know, but make sure that when, if you're using the acorn glue or uh, that you press the iron to it so that it stays firm. And if you're using glue stick, you might, you know, just give it a minute so it adheres really well to that. So. Um, let's go to the machine and a stiletto works really great here. I like, um, the wooden ones because they, um, uh, and you know, I know this paper is going to be a little bit in the way for a minute. Um, but we'll try to work with that so you can see. So I've got my pieces right sides together. I am going, I'm going slowly. And let me get that pin where I, let me put it further down. Um, so that I can, um, you know, manipulate my fabric. And it pretty much really does, you know, just work itself right in as we're sewing along and kind of falls into place really um, as we go around these curves and truly you know if the paper wasn't here it would even I could go much faster but I thought I would leave it in um, because I do know from teaching this that some people have a comfort level they feel like it it holds itself in place a little bit better and they don't have to worry about the bottom stretching um, various things and so take the paper out leave the paper in um, you know you decide and sometimes I'll put it you know I'll do the five what I call my five uh, pin method where I'll pin in between uh, these two and uh, I think the stiletto will help me here. It certainly does when I don't have paper in it. All right and now we're getting to this end where as you can see it's pretty much um, laying down right there all the way to the end.
And uh, all right. So now we have that in. Um, before I press it, I'm going to go back and remove some of this, you know, especially out of the seam line. And I think, you know, um, future reference, um, and it looks like I got just a little bit off there, I would um, remove the paper from the at least the seam line prior to sewing. I think it just feels a little bit better, even though, you know, this holds it in place. Um, I kind of kind of like it without it there but you always have you know you you always have the option to to do what works best for you and uh, so I will as I always do just hit the seam line and there where I missed it that's not a good thing. I, you know, on my own, um, if, without it here, I would go back and remove my stitching from about here to about here, and I would restitch that, and I would get that little spot there where I um, lost it there just a bit, and fix that. But for the sake of time and the show, we um, won't do that today. But know that I will go back and rework that um, boy the glue really stuck <laughs> all right so now I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did before Gonna find the middle. And right sides together. And now this is where I certainly could take and it would have maybe eliminated some of that but as you can see this pretty much lays right into the center of that and I could work that and do my five pin method which I'll put another pin right here in that spot um, and over here the paper is caught um, you know it's it's stiff there um, I tend to remove it at this point because I feel like I don't need it anymore and sometimes I leave it in sometimes I take it out at this point when I'm working um, with multiple rows so all of that is laying in there pretty pretty well um, with my five pin and method that I that I use for that so let's go to the machine and so that and I'm going to use my fingers and my stiletto and you know keep that quarter inch right there um, if I you know need to to work anything um, but it's all coming together pretty well there's a little bit of a gap right there probably because the where my fingers are more than anything else
and I just recommend you take your time and go slowly if you've not done this before um, Oh, and I want to share with you that I just, um, something that you don't want to do. And we get to make a mistake and take it out. You don't want to sew a wrinkle in it. Like that. So, you know, mistakes happen. And, um because you don't really want it to look like that when you're done. But you see how, you know, it it gets accomplished. Um, let me just pull those few stitches out right there. I'm glad I caught it. Um, I had removed my fingers from underneath, holding it out in place. So um, from my mistake, you can see that... Uh, one should not really do that. All right. So I'm going to pick it up um, a few stitches back from where um, I was so that I can lock those stitches in place right there. And get that back on track. And let me move my, so you can see what I'm, It's just thin under there. Um, make sure I'm holding that so I'm getting all of that in there without that wrinkle again. So we'll press that, and again, I'm going to butt up against that seam all the way around so that, and I have my block, and now for the tearing off of the paper, as I said, this paper um, comes off quite easily, and uh, I, I never, you know, I just fold it back and the paper uh, literally comes away. So, and that's without shortening my, you know, my stitch length. So I, I really don't have any issues with that. I, if I was tearing off the paper um, from Quilter Select, I would probably use my water, um, you know, the, the water pen, uh, because it, it's a little bit, it's, you know, 100% um, cotton, um, but it's a little bit different. It's a little bit thicker than this, but as you can see, this tears away quite easily, and I'm not even um, having to um, use the back of my seam ripper to do that. All right. And now I give it another good press and it's completed. And we have a New York beauty block. And again, you know, this is going to sew much easier as well as this one if you 
um, remove the paper first. Um, but it also holds it in place a little bit better for you if you leave the paper in. It's totally a choice that you make and you're free to make that, that choice. Um, however it works best for you. And there's no right and wrong way, I don't think, to do that. So the next one that, that we have here has got sharper points. And again, I did exactly the same thing. I measured, you know, the, the at the widest point uh, of both the points and this. Um, these will, will become uh, the points. And I have a long strip for my background. Uh, I tend to like backgrounds with a little bit of texture in them. And to start this process, you're going to remove, you know, your pattern. You know, cut your pieces. And I'm not going to go through all of this again. And you will notice that I had to go back and put in on this particular pattern I drew my own quarter inch lines in and I used the the little quarter inch um, circle circular thing so I would get a true quarter inch on that drew those in all the way around that pattern so the first thing that I am going to do is lay um, right side down all right and this is hard to see I think this is the right side and I put uh, one of my points and these two together all right with my and I'm going to put it on this side because um, I want the background to the top. All right. And I want it to go definitely past my quarter inch line. Um, I'm going to, I would flip it over and sew on. Uh, this line right here and when it opens up so let's just do that let me get this all righty I did that right. You know how you question yourself? So again, you will um, fold that back. This one covers your point and you've got your quarter inch beyond that point all the way down. This goes um, out to the outside edge. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is bring this back to the front, get my paper. I would trim that up. So you sew, you trim, and here I would, you know, cut off from my strip so that I would have it to put on to the next one. I would trim and then put the next, you know, background piece on and I would continue as I did before. So that's how you get started. You put the two pieces right sides together with the background to the top. Sew those two on. Before I move on, let me go to the... Uh, can we see a picture of the whole quilt? 
I, I don't have a whole quilt, but I will show you the picture um, that I was taking my pattern from out of Alex's book. I've got other patterns that I've been working on with other things. So let me get to it. Um, here is the New York Beauty Quilt that she made for her paper piecing book. And so you would make four of those per full circle. Um, the one that I am working on, each of the quadrants is different spikes. Um, I'm using a, a one similar to this. Then I'm using that skinny one that I just showed you and another one. Um, it has triple lines through it, so they come in various um, motifs, but from her book, this is the New York Beauty quilt, um, all of it. And basically, I wanted you to see the process of a New York Beauty, how you can measure for, you know, cutting your fabrics and your materials, and moving on from that. So... What pattern is this? Again, this one was out of Alex Anderson's uh, paper piecing book. And the paper is Carol Doak's foundation paper. Or um, the other one, if you wish to leave the paper in and keep it when you wash it, it is uh, Quilter Select Print and Piece. All right. And right now... Uh, Um, your your husband would probably be right. Could I have sewn with the paper side up? Yes, that would have probably even worked better. And I agree, the acorn um, glue is fabulous. Yeah, I, you know, I left the paper on today so that you could see that it does stabilize the bias edges on that. And, you know, glue instead of pins works really well, um, for sure. Um, I'm late to the game. Where can I find the templates again? I, I took them today out of Alex Anderson's Paper Piecing Books. Does it matter where you start your stitch line? I start off um, outside, just outside of the quarter inch line. Uh, makes me feel better. All right, I think I found the, the questions. Um, and you know, it's not hard, It it's just, getting, you know, your process in place where you, you know, put your fabric down, you uh, turn the, the paper back, you um, lay the next piece, flip it over, sew. Um, so it's, it's a matter of cut, press, sew, cut, press, sew, and you kind of get that uh, mantra going and it all, you know, it works out and you get into a rhythm with it. Sometimes on, on here, I feel as though, you know, my rhythm is off because I'm, you know, working with several different things and trying to talk at the same time, which I rarely talk to myself when I'm sewing. I, I will before and after, but um, while I'm doing that, I tend not to. So I thank you as always and, you know, for being here, coming and spending your Saturday mornings, this was a little bit longer show today. And so thanks for hanging in with us. And the freezer paper method, yes, I tend to use that um, frequently now, whereas you don't sew on the paper at all. But that's another day, um, you know, and another uh, process that we'll teach at some point. So thank you again for being here. We'll see you next week with a, you know, a new block or a new project for us, a technique to learn. And as always, have a wonderful week. And for those of you who are in the States, have a happy 4th of July. And for those of you who are here from Canada, 
um, happy Canada Day. So have a great one. Stay cool and we'll see you next week.